YouTube, what's good? It's your boy Demo here, back with another video. And today, we got the G&G SSG-1. Now, I know there's been a lot of hype behind this gun, uh, both positive and negative feedback coming in from everybody once these were uh, announced and released and pictures leaked and all that. But we're gonna go over all the features of the SSG-1. All right, let me show you guys what's up with this stock real quick. It retracts, six positions, like the standard. If I loosen this screw enough, you guys see the stock moving. Weird, right? The reason why this stock does this, it's all about comfort. I know a lot of players that shoot with their middle finger naturally, and when they do that, they're they're typically like choked up all the gun on the gun all weird, and they're you know the stock's all the way up here, and they're shooting like this and playing paintball. You know what I'm saying? Like they're about to shoot an RPG or some shit. But this stock allows you to do is kind of keep that same. What's the word, bruh? What word am I looking for? What the f you can hold the gun at the same level, but basically without having to put it all the way up here on your shoulder, if this is what you're comfortable eyesight, you can actually drop this right here. And I know this looks crazy to a lot of you guys, but it's comfy. Now, would I ever feel the need to go like this? No, I, this is, what are you doing? If you're doing this, bro, you buggy. But if you guys are just looking for a solution, if you have a full face mask or if you have trouble aiming down sight with your optics, you can get the stock, run it just like the regular drop stock like this, and this space right here is perfect enough to where you can aim down sight with the full face mask. Only thing I don't like about it is even with this tightened down, there's still a little bit of play, you know what I mean? So it'll lock into a certain position, but at the same time, it won't like completely locked in that position so you do get a little bit of wiggle room but it's nothing too crazy when you're out there playing you really don't notice it so yeah i'm actually a fan of the stock and big shout out to g, &G for you know designing something like this i think g, g would make a killing if they sold these stocks separately i can picture a bunch of people that would buy these and put them on their bills but moving forward we have a combat machine receiver i've been a really big fan of these grips these have actually been coming on their arp9s and their arp556s now let's talk about this blade trigger. I've gotten so many questions on this. This trigger setup will not be releasing on US models. Again, if you live in the US, this will come with a standard trigger and standard trigger guard. Now the Asia and European markets will come with this blade trigger setup. And I gotta be honest with you guys, when I first saw this, I'm like, uh, it's kind of whack, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's pointless. Their spring is too stiff for you to even get behind the trigger and walk it like a paintball gun but no after shooting this thing and i'll show you guys later yeah this this trigger's this trigger's pretty op so i need to give a big shout out to the one and only us airsoft shout out to scott he did an amazing video review on these mags this is gng's newest mid cap it only holds 105 rounds but this thing fits and feeds and damn near any gun you throw it in if you don't believe me head to us airsoft's youtube channel watch his video review on this and it, it's proof, the proof is in the pudding. This fit in damn near, I think every gun he's had except for one of his LE5s or a couple of his LE5s, but yeah, these fit in all my guns, they feed in all my guns, they push out heavy BBs. Now, since I got the pre-production model or the demo version, the mag I have actually did not come with the number indicators, but G&G's mags that they have like this actually have number indicators letting you know how many BBs you have left in your magazine. I believe it's like a 30, uh, 60 and 100 or, or something like that, but it lets you know how many BBs you have left And I think that's a super dope touch on top of it already being a translucent mag this base player right here It is plastic, but it's removable Come in here do your maintenance easy you can probably buy some aftermarket ones that will fit on this But I think Gigi is gonna come out with their own rubberized pull tabs that you can uh, replace on the bottom here So I think that's a super nice touch again, man g, &G I'm gonna need like 80 of these things man. now g, &G actually sent me if I can hold it up straight, maybe I can get that right. Now, GNG, <laughs> GNG also sent me one of their outer barrel kits for the SSG-1. You guys can see they've got all these different colors right here. I got my hands on the green one, and in the kit, you got pictures right here. What you will get is an outer barrel, an adapter, the barrel nut assembly, which comes with the receiver cap, and the actual barrel nut, and the flash hider. Now, out of the box, everything on my gun was all black with the bright orange flash hider. So to make my build look a little bit different, I actually did not use the green outer barrel. I used the standard black barrel, as you guys can see, I threw some stickers on it, 
and I just replaced the front and the back with the green parts. Now I also got a thread adapter in here so that way I can fit one of the trace units inside the flash hider. You can see the thread kind of peeking through right there. But I have the GNG UTV 106 as their trace unit. It fits right inside there. Screw this in. Oh, and you guys can see it's hidden. It's, you can barely even tell it's there. Now the GG tracer actually has an on and off switch right at the front. So you guys can see the tracer sticks out just enough to where you can turn it on and off and have access to that. But it still keeps a very small profile. And don't worry, if you guys don't have the GNG tracer, this does also fit the Ace Tech Lighter S. The only difference being that since you have this lip right here, it's gonna stick out a little bit farther, but no worries because it will still fit in there. Like so. But real quick, I'm actually gonna show you guys how to install the outer barrel kit because I know a lot of you guys see that, oh, they have colors, but like, how does it go on? So I'm gonna show you guys real quick. I actually took my barrel kit apart just to show you guys, but I actually have my thread adapter um, Loctited into my flash hider. So with the standard adapter, you're gonna get a gap right here And basically this will screw into the outer barrel and then your flash hider will screw Onto the adapter now with the tracer. It's a little different You don't have this gap on the thread adapter instead You kind of get two sets of threads, which is why I loctited mine in here Basically what you do is you screw them in to a certain point and you're gonna to wanna to put the O-ring over and then this assembly can screw into your outer barrel. Now before even installing the SSG-1 barrel kit, this is the actual outer barrel that comes on the SSG-1. It's tiny, but it's designed just enough to stabilize the barrel so that way it's straight all the way through and it lines up with the front end. Got your upper receiver right here. This is the outer barrel I was talking about. As you guys can see, it's tiny, but it will sit in the upper receiver. Then you wanna take the receiver ring. I actually saw something that G&G is redesigning I believe this receiver ring right here. That way when it sits on your upper receiver, instead of it being rounded right here, it's designed to be the same profile as the rail. That way you don't cut yourself on these corners. Put the receiver ring on, then you're gonna to wanna to take the barrel nut with the flared side facing forward and screw this in. So you're gonna take your outer barrel and everything screws on clockwise so that way you're able to torque everything down. Then you're gonna take the flash header assembly that we assembled earlier. And again, it's clockwise threaded, so you're gonna to wanna to screw this down. Do your best to line up this front end rail with your upper receiver rail. Then you guys have three grub screws you're gonna to wanna to put in. There's a medium length one that goes right here. There's a very small one that goes right here. And then the longest thread is gonna thread into the flash hider. Now with these, you definitely don't wanna over tighten because you can strip something. And if you want, you can apply a little bit of blue Loctite in there. Screw this last one in, and my outer barrel's in. Everything seems to be lined up nicely and tightened down. <coughs> so as much as I like this stock design, I have one gripe, battery space. Removing the stock, you guys can see, got the wiring right here, and it's just a buffer tube. The battery g, &G gave me, this is a 800 milliamp, 11.1 .1 stick battery, which fits kind of like perfectly in here. Um, you kind of have to mess with the wires a little bit, so yeah kind of got to work a little bit of magic getting them wires in there. This battery is not even charged, but let's test fire it. All right, so we got semi. Full auto. Trigger response. I don't have to come off the trigger that much. Even down here. And before you ask, yes, you can lock the trigger. The spring's a little stiff, so it takes a certain rhythm, but it's doable. That pretty much wraps up the overview part of the SSG-1. I know this is not a lot of people's style, but honestly, I can respect g gs decision to even manufacture something like this. I'm a fan. I mean, it's very comfortable. It shoots nice. It feels really nice. And it's just fun. It's just fun gun to shoot. And I'm gonna say this too. Don't let the fact that the US versions don't come with this double trigger stray you away from even picking one of these up. I think the SSG-1 is an amazing option for players out there who 
are looking to get into speed QB. Definitely a performance first gun, definitely a head turner at the field, whether people love it or hate it. It's gonna turn some heads, it's gonna get some attention, and it's gonna be able to hang in there and compete. As far as my personal touches and what I'm plan on doing with this, first of all, as you guys can see, I uh, utilized some of their outer barrel kit, um, just with the green hits here. Threw my own little decals on it. I got a For the Culture sticker. Go cop your merch, demo.bigcartel.com. Link is in the description. I also have this little RMR that I've kind of just had chilling for a while. I'm, I'm becoming a bigger fan of RMRs these days on a lot of my builds. If y'all know me, you know it's either a T1 or an RMR. And of course, since this trigger is pretty much banned out here since I live in California, um, I do plan on swapping out the trigger and trigger guard for a standard trigger and trigger guard. Maybe throw a speed trigger in there. Maybe even get uh, G&G's green what is it, like the Super Ranger kit for the ARP and throw the green accents on this gun and tune up that trigger a little bit. And that's pretty much it. I don't plan on changing the looks of this gun. I actually plan on running it for, you know, its purpose. This is no knock to any of the other YouTubers or influencers or people out there making videos on the SSG-1. But at the time I'm shooting this video, there's no SpeedQB players really, really reviewing this thing and really putting it through its paces. So I wanna be the one to do that. I personally feel like I'm a good source for that type of information and content. So what I'm gonna see if I can do, now I don't know if I can do this, but I'm gonna see. I'm gonna show up to my local field, unannounced, nobody's gonna know I'm there. I'm not gonna know who's going. I'm gonna have this gun with me. I wonder if they'll let me just for this video, if I pass this gun around to everybody, because that's what I really want to do. I want to take this gun out to the field. I want to get the player's opinion, player's perspective on it, their initial reaction, you know, shooting the gun, seeing the gun, holding the gun, whatever it is. And I want to see what they think about it. The actual competitive airsoft players, the guys that play speed QB, the, the speed softers that you guys call them. I want to get this gun in their hands and I want to get their opinion on it. Oh, bro, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Yeah, y'all are getting next to this. <laughs> Off top feels, bro. What are, you, what are you thinking? Just the the whole like layout of the gun. It literally, just feels comfortable. It's sturdy, just for, just for like how minimal everything is on it. Dude, found it, right? It's a wrap. Drop stock is getting me going crazy, bro. The stock, right? Literally, the stock the, is everything. Bro, I was reviewing it earlier. I'm like, yo, people are gonna melt over the stock. Low key, like. I don't even need a C climber, bro. This guy right here. You don't, exactly. Paintball, right? Yeah, literally. Paintball. I can look perfectly into that right now. Hell yeah. Bro, it's literally gonna be a wrap. If you try something. Hell yeah. It sits nicely. Hey, grab it. Oh, it's fine. First impression is just holding the gun. And be honest. It's not bad. It's not terrible. I kind of dig it, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, this is pretty nice. I like it. Oh! Oh shit, fastest finger in the West. Out of the box, bro. Yeah. So Gunner's gonna run it up first. I'm scared. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I got this. <laughs> I may got this. Then just do that. And then that. Oh! Let's go! Alright, bro. After action report, honest opinion. We saw the clip. I got the clip. You got the first person footage. Uh, dude, man. That gun in itself, it shoots perfect. The comfortability of the gun and the durability of the gun is perfect. The gun is all in all just OP as fuck. So, so I, out of no, out of the box gun though. Out of the box gun, I'm not up? changing. I'm, I'm buying it off top. 
off top. No but I don't get why that gun gets so much hate because that gun smacks. Even the, the recoil of it too, there's like some type it's of It's like a snappiness, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So all in all, I'm giving that gun a 10 out of 10. That gun, I'm, I want to buy that gun. Y'all heard it here first. This is a competitive airsoft player playing in a competitive airsoft environment. And I play with pistols, so I would literally oh, transfer shit, that's right. just for that gun. Just for like the sleekness of it, how like light it feels, and how hard it shoots. So tournament day, you would run that gun? Hell yeah, every single time. Damn, for sure. It's really good. Shoot it! No, not me, not me. <laughs> Oh my god! Right? <laughs> oh my god, yes! <laughs> I have no pads. I feel so naked out here, bro. This gun is not that bad. It's so weird that I'm using it. I am not supposed to play. Hey, shoot back left! So that's my first run on the airsoft field in six months and it was using this gun. I'm gonna be honest, not once while I was out there playing did I feel the need to even feather the trigger. I didn't do it at all. I did kind of do that method where you choke up and you shoot with the middle finger and this thing was keeping up. I usually use shorter front end builds um, for competition so this is a, maybe a little learning curve for me. But when I'm snapping and I'm playing my barrier, I have this much room to work with from the wall of my barrier. So I have to actually stand back on my barrier a little bit in order to play it, or I can tuck here and play a little bit tighter, but I'm still dealing with this. So it's not bad, but that's just one thing to get used to, I think, personally, from my player's perspective, because I'm used to a smaller build where I can tuck up a little bit tighter. But I mean, besides that, this thing performed nicely. I think everyone that can use it today can attest to that. They said it shot good. It's pretty accurate. It feels good to snap shoot. It's comfortable. A few things I noticed while they're playing with it is that no matter what position you have the stock in, there's a little bit of wobble. And when you're shouldered, it's pretty stable, but there are like slight movements that could throw your shot off. There are times where I would snap and when I come out, I'm up here a little bit. My baby's barely missing my target. So you really gotta stay tight with this. Um, really pull the gun into your shoulder, and then when you snap, just stay in. All right, y'all, so that's a wrap on the uh, SSG1 review. Players loved it, it shoots nice. I actually really enjoyed it out on the field. And uh, there you have it. People's opinions seem pretty positive. Uh, again, despite the looks, it performs pretty nicely.